When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. Mark 1, 37-38 Everyone was searching for Jesus. The previous day he had entered Simon's house, and healed Simon's mother-in-law. This led to crowds descending on the house also seeking healing. Jesus, we are told, healed many that day, and perhaps late into the night. And then early in the morning, when it was still dark, and while the household was sleeping, Jesus got up and went off by himself to a solitary place for prayer. His disciples' greeting is informative. Everyone, they said, is searching for you. But what is it that they, were, they wanted from him? Was it to do more healings and miracles? Jesus' answer reveals that he saw his purpose as more than just being a healer and a miracle worker, but that an essential part of what he interpreted his mission to be was that of proclaiming the arrival of God's kingdom amongst us. The very act of healing Simon's mother-in-law can be seen as just another incident of healing or as something deeper and complex. For Jesus not only frees her from the illness which had bound her, but he also restores her to her community and to her vocation. There is a difference between curing and healing. Whereas the cure removes the physical ailment, Rachel Evans, in her book, Searching for Sunday, describes the slow and difficult work of healing as follows. And I quote, We are called to enter into one another's pain, anoint it as holy, and stick around no matter the outcome. The thing about healing, as opposed to curing, is that it is relational. It takes time. It is inefficient. End of quote. Walking with someone through grief or through the process of reconciliation requires patience, presence, and a willingness to stand with them as long as it takes. Rachel Evans goes on to say, The church offers death and resurrection. The church offers the messy, inconvenient, gut-wrenching, never-ending work of healing and reconciliation. The church offers grace. Anything else we try to peddle is snake oil. End of quote. So Jesus cures this woman of her fever. But that is not all he does for her. He gives her back her vocation and her dignity. Over the years, we have seen how illness and infirmity can cut off the elderly and the sick from the social world. We see this played out during the pandemic as many are unable to interact with their friends and with their church. Many are unable to engage in what they see as their calling. But Simon's mother-in-law shares not just the joy of being restored to health, but she is also restored to her calling and she can now return to rendering service to her community. This healing is personal and it is transformative and this is what Jesus does. I suppose similar transformations in people's lives happened throughout that evening, as cures became opportunities for healing and lives were changed. 
Often persons who have had a past from which they have been freed by Jesus or some great illness will sit in my office and express gratitude for deliverance. But they also will express a strong desire to give back generously in service as the grace of healing that Jesus gives have given their lives a new purpose and meaning. But as rich as all this is, it is not what Jesus saw as the main focus of his ministry. For Jesus was not merely a miracle worker, but the Son of God, who can offer what only God has the right to give, that is transformation, healing, and new life. And this was the message which all persons needed to hear. So, for us, the church who in our time is called to herald the good news of God's kingdom among us, it is proclaimed in the way we forgive each other's sins, the way we love and include those who are different from us, the way we welcome the poor, the way we love our enemies, the way we bind up those who are broken-hearted or have suffered loss. The way we cancel debts and live in Christ-like patterns of fellowship. And that is what we should never lose sight of.
Let us pray. God of love, giver of life and health, we pray for all who in their various callings serve the needs of men and women in sickness of body or mind. Equip them as your fellow workers in the ministry of healing and strengthen them to share in the task of making life whole. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to pray with me the collect for the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.